my name is Ade. So I've noted down this, well, I have the point so that it'll be a lot quicker. Um, at the end of December 2016, I thought my life had ended. I had come out of an abusive marriage, but also got into an abusive, well, not abusive, but a really terrible relationship almost immediately. And just looking for hope and love or, you know, I don't know. Anyway, that ended. So December 2016, I just thought, this is over. My memories are, I'd literally, literally be flat on the floor and be telling God, I need help. You know, all I could see in front of me was darkness and bleakness. Um, so I went to Nigeria in December 2016, and I went with my son. Now, I didn't have the strength to come back with him in January, and thank God for mother, so I left him with my mom, and I came back to the UK. And I've always worked in financial services or contracting, but at that time, I, I was sinking really quickly. I'd open my laptop and not be, even be able to apply for work. Um, and then I couldn't even, I mean, the few calls that came in, nothing happened. Um, and then I was, I remember it was my birthday, January 21st, 2017, I was on Instagram, and I saw a clip, Mrs. Adinawa had preached, and she preached about the eagle, and how the eagle dominates his fear, and when it, well, you'll find the clip, sure. Anyway, <laughs> I said, and, and my first thought was, who is this woman? Who is she? Like, who must, who, who dominates this way, you know? And so I went on YouTube that afternoon, I watched every single video I could find. I was desperate. And then there were some, I don't know if you know the videos that have prayer points, and I prayed some prayers of favor. In my search for help, I went to a church, and the guy just looked at me, I said, how are you? Anyway, you look like things are really bad. Here's 2,000 pounds. I think that was the first time in my life I would ever give me money. So I thought, okay, there's something happening here with this woman. I reached out to her on IG with no expectation that she was going to respond, and she responded, and it was very simple. I mean, I had typed like, Five pages. Mrs. A's was well, very simple. Partners meeting tomorrow, if you're around, be there. I, I snuck out of the house. Like, I didn't tell anybody. I just dashed to the meeting in the morning. Like, I was like, I must get this, you know, and I got to the meeting. Um, the power of God was tangible. She prayed, and I remember how she prayed for me. Um, she laid hands on me, and she said, come. It was like a tug on my spirit. Come and join us. Come and live. And I got home, my mom had sent me some money and I gave, I gave everything. I gave to Awesome Church of Lagos, Awesome Church of Lagos. I just put that to give, I needed to, I just felt that for me, that was what I was led to do. Now, at this point, let me be honest, I was getting evicted, I couldn't pay for my car. I've always worked in financial services and contracted, so you know what that means. But in the last seven, something had just happened and it was, it was bad. Friday the 21st of May, I do not remember dates, but I remember this date because it was bad. I said, let me finally open my letters. You know how, I don't know if you guys have heard, in the UK, when there's debt, you just hide, you know. So I had these letters around that I didn't open, and I opened them. And I've never been evicted before, but this particular letter said, um, you were supposed to leave your house on the 13th. And then apparently they work out a date where they'll come out. Anyway. You're supposed to leave your house on the 13th of May. Now, the Thursday before that, the whole of, about six people in some churches had reached out to me. I said, but I, I didn't know Mrs. A personally, so let me just put that there. And six people had reached out to me, and I'm like, why? You know, I, I didn't know why they were looking for me. Anyway, the next day, I got a phone call, from, send us your number, I got a phone call from Mrs. A. And she said, I did what's going on. Now, the moment I opened that letter, I, I, my mind went, I'm like, what do I do now? And I was about to, I, I literally got into my car with not, no tax, no insurance. No, I just got into the car and went to the nearest shelter beside me, my house in Barnet then. And the guy looked at me and said, why are you here? How did you get into this situation? I'm like, I don't understand. I'm here for help. And you're asking me, how did I get to this situation? Myself, I don't know. I need help, you know. And um, I came home and Mrs. A called me. And she spoke, and she said, okay, so what's the plan? So tell me the problem. You know when you're in serious shame and condemnation, you don't want to tell your situation to anybody. I said, I can't tell you, don't come and pity me. You know? And she said, no, God, had something, I've been in the UK six times, there's a reason I have to speak to you. And she said, well, I said, I don't know. I told her she was on the phone with me for two hours that day. And she said, okay, it looks like we don't know what step to take next. And that is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want to, you know, it was, it was Shah exactly what I needed. And she prayed and she said, go to Lagos. Go to Lagos, care. She said, go to Lagos. 
if I tell you guys, this has never happened to me before, the ticket was free. My house, a three-bedroom house, I packed it up. It, we shipped everything to Lagos. I did not lose a thing. My taxi to the airport was free. I got to Virgin Atlantic desk, desk with four suitcases, and the lady said, we ch check them in, check them in. We only charge you for one more. I'm like, what is going on here? From the minute the instruction came, as much as I questioned, I just said, yes, ma. Guys, their testimonies, the bottom line is, it didn't seem real. And Mrs. A, when she prayed, she said one thing. She said, I did see a number in the spirit, 18 months, one and a half. She said, in 18 months, you'll be established. The call was the 21st of May. I can't continue, but let me tell you, my son is back with me. I live, I, she, she said, don't call numbers, but I feel like I need to, I live in a million pound house today. I just bought a brand, and I'm not being material, but you have to understand, my life, it, there was no hope. And, you know, I have a job for the first time in 13 years that I've lived in the UK. I have a contract that's been renewed for another nine months. The first one didn't finish. I, I started a vlog on purpose. I am living. Now, her words were, you will be established. I'm not just established materially. I, I, was, she called, I was talking to her yesterday, and I just bought a and evoke. And I said to her, I said, I'm not just established materially. The, the money is the least, but I have the word in me. When situations arise, I know how to speak back. And that is the confidence. Amazing, amazing. Um, next we have Bolaji. I thank God for my life and I thank God for Pastor Jumoke's life. Um, I think it was around some time, end of last year, I was in a very, very hopeless situation. Um, when I came into the UK, um, I came to study law. After that, I did my postgraduate in human resources. So I have got, um, like most of us here, a well-educated background. But um, I've never worked, you know, never had a job. For seven years, it was a struggle. I became very desperate. I think it comes to a point in your life when you say to yourself, enough is enough. You know, I need to move away from this mountain. And for me, it was last year, November. We went to Dubai to celebrate my husband's birthday. But I wasn't happy. I was not happy. I was angry with everything around me. And I stumbled on Pastor Jumoke's um, preaching on YouTube. And thinking, reflecting on it now, I don't think it was Miss Tumbling. I believe it was the Holy Spirit that led me to her. Um, our preaching became part of my life, you know. And there was a particular one, um, I can't remember the title, but it's to do with obtain, obtain and dominate. Yeah, dominate and obtain. After the preaching, there were some dangerous prayer points, you know, at the end of it. And they were targeted at my situation. I remember locking myself in the toy elm, in the bathroom of the hotel. Because, and I said to God, hey, this is between me and you. You have to settle me. You know, I can't carry on with this shame. And especially when you know you carry something. You know this, I knew it wasn't me. But anyway, I did those prayers. And there was something else, you know, there were some instructions that came with the prayer points as well, which I did, and it was giving. I believe so much in giving, and I know it's a very sore point at the moment. People don't talk about giving. It's your prerogative, it's my prerogative. It always worked for me. And I know in, one, in the preaching, she said, you know what, um, you pray about the land you're on. And then I was in Dubai, and I went and I, you know, barefooted, stepped on that land, and I said, you land of Dubai, I'm going to possess you. I'm going to possess the riches of this country. My kids will possess the riches of this country. Bearing in mind, I was jobless, you know. But what I did as well was, what I had in my account, I emptied it out. So I went back to the UK penniless. No job, no money. Anyway, that went. On me getting back to London, right, I heard something very clear in my spirit, told me, oh, 
get dressed, because what I do is I do the school runs. I'm jobless, you know, I take my kids to school and come back home to do whatever. On this particular occasion, the spirit told me, oh, you have to get ready and go to a place. This was in the NHS. And go there, you applied, I applied back in January, and this was in, December, in November. And tell them about the application. I was a bit reluctant, but anyway, I went. That, you know, I applied, you know, back in January, I haven't heard from you. So what they did was, sorry, pardon me. So what they did was, the woman apologized, and I got the job. You know, immediately I got the job. Anyway, to cut the long story short, I lost the job. And that was down to recklessness. Because one thing I've also noticed in my life is whenever it comes to my birthday, there's always a pattern of sadness. Whenever it's October, October 21st, starting from September, there would always be major crises in my life that my birthday would never happen. So again this year, God showed me, it's looming, it's coming, be aware. Did I pray? Yes, I said a silent prayer. I did not pray the way I was meant to, and I lost the job. But this got me very angry, because I felt, you know what, I've been denied of my joy. You know, God gave me that. So anyway, my husband, right, um, he was due to go for an interview. Again, his own story is another testimony. Um, with my husband, he's been applying for a particular job. He's a medical doctor. And the last interview he went, he actually went for an interview 13 times. And this is a very, very brilliant doctor. Man, somebody that came out in honors. Anyway, on this particular occasion, his interview was booked for the 1st of October. And in my spirit, I was beginning to feel, oh, he's not going to get the job. Anyway, I called Pastor Jumoke and I told her what happened. She was very cross with me because she said, God revealed these things to you, but you did nothing about it. She gave me some prayer points, which I prayed. To God be the glory. My husband has been waiting to become a consultant for five years. After I did this prayer, on the 1st of, of, on the 1st of October, he was signed off as a consultant in Ops and Gyne. And on the second day, this, I can almost say this has never happened. He got a job as a consultant where we wanted it. Because his job has always taken him away from the family. He is, I mean, he works everywhere else but never at home. But the particular place we wanted him to work, God brought him back home. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have come to return all glory to the faithful, almighty, covenant-keeping God. I attended Elson Fraser's meeting last October. I didn't want to go for the meeting because it was around my son's birthday and I live in Nottingham. So when I told my husband, oh, I'm going to London for a program, I was like, why this weekend was happening? And I told him, Mrs. I didn't know why around because shortly before that period, around a month or two months, I, that was when I first heard about her. So I listened to all her videos, I watched all her messages. So, you, you know, you knew. Because when I first heard about her, I was like, oh my God, I just discovered this woman. She's so great. She's so awesome. I was playing all her messages all around the house, always listening to all her videos. So when I told him, oh, this woman is going to be around, I have to be in London. You know, there was just this nudge in my spirit you just have to be there this is you know this is not just a coincidence this is god is doing something because why is it you know you just met her the next thing she's coming to london i was like oh this is an opportunity to meet her you know one-on-one -on -one. so okay we yeah, agreed okay no problem let's go to london that weekend we went he dropped me off at the venue and wally and my son went to play so in the course of the program when it started they started with testimonies a particular lady gave a testimony she said she attended the program the previous year and that during the testimony time, somebody gave testimony and then she said, oh, I will testify, I will testify, I will testify. She'd had, you know, several miscarriages and then she finally had a baby. So she was giving her testimony. And when she gave that, I mean, a very beautiful testimony, I was struck with that statement, I will testify. So I just held on to it. I kept saying, oh, I will testify, I will testify. I was like, this is me also next time, next day, I will testify. At that point in time, I didn't have any specific need. There was nothing I was asking God for. But I just kept saying, I will testify. So we went home. And I mean, Miss Adeno, I gave Miss Adeno a gift. She called me. She was so, you know, grateful, very appreciative. She prayed with me, concerning my son's birthday, thanked me for the gift, you know, encouraged me. And then I, that was it at that point. So at that time also, we're living in, you know, a tiny two bedroom. We're tired of the place. It was just... We just it was just no it was not it at all. We wanted to leave, but when we sat down, you know, towards the end of the year, I made plans. 
there was no way we could move, you know. I mean, it was going to cost us a lot if we had to move to another place. So we went around the houses, we went to new builds, because, okay, when we're like, okay, mortgage, what do we like? What we want in a, in our own house? So we said, oh, we want a new build, we want this, you know. We just said, writing down, I wrote what I wanted, he wrote what he wanted, and then we'll go to new builds, I mean, new development, we'll start looking at it. And then we saw one, one particular area, I was like, oh, this is, you know, we like this area. So we decided to go there. We saw a particular house. We were like, this house had everything we both wanted. So when um, we went to visit them, that was sometime in December when we went to check the development. They said, oh, this is going to finish. We were like, I went, you you know, for the access, what time are you looking at? We were like, oh, like two years time. <laughs> so man said, by February, they're packing their load and going. They've almost finished. I can't see it's almost complete. We are like, ah, okay, we just respected ourselves and we turned back. But our eyes did not leave that place. We kept going to the website every time we look. I mean, for like the first two or three weeks, um, the, it was still available. I was, even joked to my husband, I said, ah, it's not going anywhere. It's it going to wait for us. My husband would just, you know, he won't say anything. So after a while, after about a month, it it, it went. Everything went it, they, on the website. When we go, they said this has been closed. And then you know, I stopped. After, like the following week, after I still saw that, I would still go back. I was like, ah, ha, ah, God, this is not how we planned it to. They say this um still this site has been closed. We'll go there again. They will say it's been closed. So I, after that, I just gave up. I was like, okay, God probably has somewhere better. He's moving us to. So after like three months later or so, about three or four months later, my husband got, you know, a better job in a very good tech company. So instead of visiting the mortgage, he said, ah, let's look and see again. Then he went, he just went to that site again. And then he said, ah, I think this thing is available. I said, it's not possible. I've checked it that in like three times, they've closed. And then he showed me, I was like, eh, are you serious? Next thing, he contacted um them. They said, eh, yeah, they just have one plot available that the person that was supposed to build it, they will buy it. And after the process, she pulled that for some reasons. And I was like, ah, okay, that is interested. I mean, he just said, you know, like, we couldn't really, but somehow, because it was the last one, they just said, the way the ones down contacting him, what is this? They did everything, you know, all the checks, the everything, they just did everything. Boom. Within, I mean, this is everything just happened so quickly because this is a place where they told us that oh forget it by february if you don't get it we are, and we're you know me had forgotten about it because i've checked the website like three times and they had told me it was closed so we had forgotten about it and then all of a sudden they were the ones disturbing us before you know within a month because i remember even when we went to see the you know solicitor regarding when we were about to phone and we were like oh how long will it take the solicitor was like you'll be surprised how things how quickly things move if you know if they want to get you know this so before we know it under a month we had moved to our own spacious four bedroom house oh my god god is good when we first moved the first night i couldn't even sleep i went down and i looked around the whole house i was like god god because you know i mean i remember where we were coming from i mean we're living in an apartment this is a house with everything we wanted i had as in my husband got everything he had in his list i had everything i wanted in my list i will go downstairs i will kneel down i will cry you know i just thank god like god thank you thank you i mean i mean what did we do to deserve this this is this was not even in the plan at all we didn't i mean if anyone had told me if mr i didn't know what herself i called me that time and told me ah ah you came all the way to come and see me sandra don't worry this time next year you'll be living in your own new house i mean i'll have said i'll just be smiling i'll say amen thank you my boy i mean i'll say it not because i believe but because let me just say amen you don't know which india is passing by like we say and then as if you know god now top it over me also at that last time you know i mean i had a son but there was no plans for a child because obviously we had to sort some things put some things in place and then i mean look at her six weeks and then six weeks ago god blessed us with a girl I said, because i had a boy and then i was like god i want a girl when i found out i was pregnant i was like lord i want a girl i said lord just complete it god has been good he has been so faithful i just want to give him all the glory I just i just so last year around april the 29th of april my husband my now husband and i at the time he wasn't my husband um <laughs> We had gone to um, a coffee shop and um, he was about to have a conversation with me. As soon as my coffee, or actually I went to hot so as soon as my drink came, he got a phone call from my big sister and they said my dad had passed away. Um, so I was very close to my dad and it was just the worst thing ever. 
A few months later, he told me that on that day, at that moment, he was actually about to tell me that he wanted to send his people to go and see my people. And now my dad is gone. Um, when I came to Awesome Treasures last year, I was really in a very funny state because we had started talking about getting married and I had um, watched Mrs. Um, Jimoke on um, Keen Women. And I remember she talked about how close she was to her dad. And I just liked her. She reminded me of the kind of person I wanted to, I want to become. So I decided I was going to make it here. So when I came, um, she asked, after the program, she said two people, if you're believing God for the fruit of the womb and if you're believing God for a spouse. The issue, with, the issue I had was I was told I couldn't get married to my husband in the December of 2017 because I have to wait 12 months after my father has been buried as part of tradition. But I knew that that was not what God was saying. My husband knew as well that that's not what God was saying. For me, getting married to my husband was literally purpose about to take place. And I was not ready to let anybody stop me. So I had been in prayer for a while. And God had said to me, keep praying. When I came, when I came that morning, I spent so much time praying and preparing myself. I just knew I was about to have an encounter with God. So when she said, if you're believing God for a spouse, come. I'm, I'm sure some people are wondering why she's going in front because she has a potential spouse, but there's a difference between a boyfriend and a husband. And I said to myself, I don't have a husband yet, so I'm going in front because that husband must manifest. When I came, um, I just love how she was so attentive to the Holy Spirit because I kept watching her and she said, there's too many people here. I need to trust the Holy Spirit to, to minister to specific people. And I knew she was talking about me. So I was watching her and I was watching her. And then she blessed. And then I went to one, she blessed me. And nothing happened. So I was going back. And then she called me back and said, you're disappointed. And I said, yes. <laughs> she called me back and said, you're disappointed. I said, yes. <laughs> and then she asked me to stretch out my hand. And I held my hand. If you were here last year, I was the woman who jumped all around this room and moved from one side to the other side of the room. It was absolutely crazy. But that was Saturday. On Wednesday, my mom called me and said, I've just gone to speak to the family elder. And they've said, you can go ahead with the wedding. My mom said, they said, he's actually called a meeting with the rest of the family and has told them that nobody should stand in your way. I didn't pay for my wedding dress. I didn't pay for my reception dress. I didn't pay for my hair. I didn't pay for my makeup. I didn't pay for the chef who did the food. We didn't pay for anything. The things we spent our money on, my husband and I used it to start a business. So if you're here today and believing God for a shift, you are in the right place. If you're here today, you're believing God for a testimony, you're in the right place. The spirit of God is here and is about to move you to your next dimension. God bless you. I stumbled upon um, a YouTube video of Mrs. A and Gifty Auntie, a Ghanaian TV host, about 18 months ago. I was awe stricken because I had never seen in or heard anyone speak about God in such a relatable and practical way. I immediately started to follow her on Instagram and Twitter and listen to her podcasts and watch her YouTube videos. It was therefore with great excitement that I attended the summit last year in London, during which there was a prayer session where Mrs. A called out for those who were desirous of um, a child. I was among those um, she prayed for and laid hands on. Um, she said something profound during the prayer session, which was that Mary did not need a seed to conceive Jesus and that all we needed was a tiny little sperm seed to be able to conceive and that was not impossible for God. At that point in time I had been married for nearly five years and had prayed to God for a child 
believed God for a child, had been prayed for, prophesied over, and was beginning to feel stigmatized because it seemed as though nothing was working and the only obvious prayer point in my life was regarding um, getting pregnant. Um, today, to the glory of God, I am pregnant and due um, nearly a year, exactly a year after I was laid hands upon. And I thank God for his grace and faithfulness, for the fact that he is indeed an awesome God and a covenant keeper, a God who indeed lifts our heads up. And I thank him for the life of Mrs. A and for what he is using her to do in the lives of others through awesome treasures. Foundation. Okay, so my testimony is this. Um, I attended the summit for the first time last year and I partnered with Awesome Treasures. Um, I work with Ansan Young as a contractor and um, I started a project with them last year, August. In May of this year, um, there was a platform change and so I was, there was a transition, so I moved on to another project. And um, yeah, so that was in me and the projects went on. And then um, towards the end of June, um, by virtue of some miracle, I just got off the phone with the client and by virtue of, it was a wealth management project. And by virtue of some miracle, I got talking to um, another colleague and he started to tell me about how, you know, some of them had renegotiated their rates and all that. And I didn't do that because I thought, okay, it's just the trans transition. And, you know, that particular project was rounding up, so there wasn't any need for. So anyway, um, he said that to me and I started contemplating. So he said, okay, why don't you try and see if there's anything you can do about it? And I remember that um, for those that have read um, Mrs. A's book, The Past to the Throne, she talked about the fact that anything that is owed to you will not only be paid, but will be paid with recompense. So I said, okay, what's the worst that can happen? Let me put in, I put in a query. And then my project consultant said, okay, put in a justification for it. And I did that, I did everything that I had to do. And that was towards the end of June. And in July, week in, week out, I would ask him what's going on. I'm like, okay, they're reviewing it. It's gone to the client, it's gone to this table, it's gone to that table. July, August, the same. So at the start of September, I started to get, I started to get really frustrated. At a point, I thought, you know what, maybe I'll let this all go. So there was a particular morning I asked him, it was on a Monday, and he said, um, actually, it looks like it's nearly getting to the final stages of being approved, but um, it's on a particular table and that person hasn't approved it, and until he does, we can't do anything about it. So um, that day, I sent a message to Mrs. A, and I said, well, this is the situation. I am, these people are short paying me by nearly 200 pounds a day. That was how much it was. And um, I think there's a Sam Sambala or Tobaya. Somebody's holding this back, you know, and she said, they can't owe you, it is kingdom money and all that. So that was on a Monday. And then later in the evening, she sent me a message and said, call me and let's pray. And she called me um, and I called her that day and we prayed about it on the phone and she just encouraged me and we left it there. And uh, that was on Monday. On Tuesday, I went to work as normal. And then on Wednesday morning, my project consultant came to my table and said, your payment has been approved. And not only was it approved, they are, pay they paid, uh, or they are paying, uh, they are backdating it to when that project started in May. So not only are they paying, they are paying with recompense. So I just want to, like, you know, the other lady that gave, gave her testimony, I said, if you are looking for a, a shift, a paradigm shift, something that will take you to your next level, where you will declare and things will happen, you are in the right place. God bless you. We just appreciate this is Mr. Tolu Alashe, <laughs> Ade Nowo. I think splitting image of, of Mrs. A. It's such a honor to present the Partner of the Year uh, award to one of our partners. We have amazing partners, but this partner stood out and deserves recognition for passion, commitment, and we want to give a round of applause to Mrs. Tomi Ade Moroti. Can we just? <laughs> well deserved she wasn't expecting this so 
Please let's give her a round of applause. I don't want to go into detail of how hard she has worked. Um, she joined us just last year and in one year has distinguished herself. Let's give her a round of applause, please. It seems you have a tie this year. Excuse me. I've, I've just been played. <laughs> I didn't see this coming. It's, it's such a gentle man. <laughs> Says, um, awesome, this awesome treasures foundation, awesome award is Dr. Ayo Anifalaji, Partner of the Year 2018. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have one more round of applause for the partners, please? <laughs> 